At Federal, we have products for every season and every pursuit. Our passionate and dedicated teams design, build, and deliver the world's best American-made ammunition, whether you're hunting, target shooting, or defending yourself and family. Our pride and hard work can be found in every box, ammo can, or bottle of ammunition. For us, it's always in season. It's federal season. Welcome to Federal Ammunition's podcast, It's Federal Season. I'm Jason Nash, VP of Marketing, along with Media Director Brian Kelvington. This is part two in our series of discussions with USA shooting as they're heading to Japan soon to compete in the Olympic Games. Joining us today are two more medal hopefuls, Kaylee Browning, representing USA shooting in women's trap, and Austin Smith, representing the USA in women's skeet. We're so honored to have you both join us today. Thank you for having us. I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, it's great to have you. Um, Austin, I mean, you're, you're one of the, the younger shooters on the team, you know, 19 years old. I think your birthday is going to be right before the games start. Um, tell us a little bit more about your background and, and how you got started in shooting. Well, it's actually kind of a funny story. So I was never really the best kid at athletics. So my dad always thought, hey, I love shotgun shooting. I love the sport and I love how it's very skill-based. So he thought I'd be good at it. And we went out, I want to say, about seven years ago and I mean day one shot on a practice trap for a little bit and then turned into day two day three day four I just kept on going out there and going out there and soon enough I was just addicted to it <laughs> oh that that's fantastic that's how that's how it should be right you you really get excited about uh your craft and you know you're being a little bit modest I know um qualifying for the team this year you know you unseated kim Rohde, who's been a uh, great for the sport right uh, many time gold medalist um tell us about how that felt to to kind of represent the new uh generation of shooters for usa shooting oh it, it's amazing just being able to shoot with her and all these other amazing women shooters on the national team who are world champions world record holders national champions it's it's I, it's undescribable really it's amazing that i'm able to have the opportunity to represent them and the rest of the team and also the younger generation that's coming up awesome and you have a pretty good coach too right training with vincent <laughs> yeah i know vinny's my training partner and coach awesome yeah, he's no, another federal team member which is great well, Kaylee, and for you, you had a similar route, except for you started a lot earlier, but you had the influence of your dad um, taking you out to um, bird hunt when you were young and set some targets at home. So why don't you walk us through your uh, progression? Yeah, so, yeah, my, my situation was kind of similar to Austin's. Um, my dad got me into it. He was a competitive shotgun shooter as well. He shot sporting clays at first, um, which is what I originated in. Um, I started competing when I was eight years old. So uh, not that much younger than when Austin started, but um, looking looking back in hindsight now, I'm like eight years old, that is so young, but um, it fit because I grew up around it. And I can remember my dad would always set up, you know, when I would get out of school or something, he would have Coke cans full of water or like balloons full of water and he would have them on our, our bank behind our house. And he would let me shoot them with like a BB gun. And whenever the water would like explode out, I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. I mean, <laughs> super easy to entertain when I was <laughs> little, but um, that's kind of what got me hooked. He always made it fun. And there was, we always had like many competitions against each other. So it was, it was always a fun thing to go do. And it was always like a family um, experience as well. My mom would always come out and either pull for us or um, be out there <laughs> cheering on. Um, it, it typically was always me and my mom against my dad. So um and i rarely ever won and he never let me win either he was always he always never let me win but um yeah i got started through him and then when i was 15 years old i switched over to the international games um because i found out that 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 they were offered in the olympics 
And the Olympics was always kind of a dream and a goal of mine from a very young age. So when I found out that shooting was offered in the Olympics, I was like, that, that's a no brainer. I, I got to switch over. And, and that's what I did and made my first team at 15. And then kind of the rest is history. Oh, that's fantastic. And that parental oversight, I'm shocked that um, he wouldn't let you win. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, I was a kid. I was like, come on, dad. He's like, nope, you got to earn it. So. <laughs> well, it all pays, it all pays off in the end, right? I mean, you did, it did. Yeah. It, it taught me what I didn't understand then, but, um, it, and it was all in funny games, of course, but, um, it taught me a lesson, you know, like you don't just get handed for it. You got, you got to work for it. And I think that installed some, some good values now looking back on that. That's awesome. What a great start to a, to a fantastic career. Um, so having heard a little bit of your background, Kaylee, tell us a little bit about the excitement leading up to the Olympics. I saw, you know, USA shooting and all the athletes, you all gave the hundred day countdown the other day. So it's, it's getting closer. You know, how, how excited are you for that competition coming up? Um, I, I mean, I think we can, I can speak for for all of the athletes, I think we're ready for the games to happen. You know, they got postponed, so that was a bummer. Um, so now that we've hit the hundred day mark and everything seems to be on, I, I think we're all we're all really anxious and excited to get them going and to have a really successful games this year. Twenty years of shooting competitively, you know how how has that journey been to get to this point? You know, the ups and downs, especially considering you know the Olympic trials. Yeah. Um, so I would say overall, you know, I've had a pretty good career. I've won some world cup medals, um, set some national and world records, um, and two time Pan American medalist. So, um, the course of my career has really kind of evolved the more I've gotten older. Um, I can remember times when, you know, I thought if I lost a shoot or if I didn't make a team, you know, that was just like the end of the world for me. I remember thinking those things. But as I get older, I look back in hindsight and failure is something that everybody goes through. And it's something that you're going to go through more often than your successes. You know, that's how you learn and that's how you figure out things. And that's how you grow as a competitor as well. So um, all of the failures, you know, I got really, I was the alternate for 2012 team, missed it by two targets. Um, That was a hard pill to swallow. Uh, 2016, missed it again, missed the Olympic team again, just by a couple of targets. And then 2020, finally making the team, being able to look back on all of those struggles and failures and, and having to persevere and come through those, um, is what got me to where I am today. I mean, if, if you keep working at something and you have a goal and you don't quit on that goal, you will accomplish it. It's, you just, you can't give up on yourself. You're also a coach, you know, you, you have many other, uh, talents and, I would imagine that experience really helps instill those values into the people you teach too. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I see it. And you know, I'm only 28 years old. So um, being able to have an almost 20 year career um, at the age that I am is, is super beneficial being a coach because not only have I probably experienced what most of the kids that I coach are going through, I can kind of help guide them to kind of shorten that curve on you know, just helping them get out of that funk or whatever it is that they're going through. And, and it's hard for, um, it's hard for a teenager, you know, 14, 15 year old kid to ask them not to worry about their score, not to worry about their miss or, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense to them at, at that time. But, um, having the experience is, you know, and being able to relate to them and tell them personal stories, I think is what kind of, kind of helps them to get, get through it. And they're like, Hey, I'm not, not alone. You know, everybody goes through this. Hey, Austin, you were quoted as after qualifying um, as you were just in shock. You know, you and your teammate, as discussed earlier, Amber English, you took out Kim Rohde, one of the most decorated female athletes of all time, um, and world champions Caitlin Connor and, and Dania Vizzi. Tell us, has, has that shock worn off yet? Honestly, it still hasn't, <laughs> even a year later. Just seeing their scores from the past and just trying to measure up to them. It's pretty difficult for me to imagine me taking an Olympic spot while they didn't. But um, I've been training every single day for the past year, 
putting in the rounds, doing the best I can. So I'm hoping I can live up to everybody's expectations. So walk us through that quali- um, the qualifying process and then what you've done since last March. So do you, can you kind of describe that whole event and, and how it unfolded? Oh, gosh. So I remember, <laughs> I want to say part one, me and my dad, we were sitting in our hotel room and we were just sitting there going, okay, well, this is Olympic trials, but you know what? We're going to do our best. And at the end of the day, we're still going to do good enough to be on junior team. So that was kind of my mindset going into it, which I think helped with the nerves a lot. And um, I ended up winning that match, I think, by, I want to say, just a few targets. So going into part two, I was a little more nervous. But back in my mind, me and my dad kept on saying, it's all right. We'll always be on junior team. We can always do that. And that really used my nerves and helped me make the team, I think, just because I always had that as my backup, per se. It's, nice. it's really important to have that that support. And uh, speaking of support, you'll be going to um, Japan with your coach, a two-time Olympic champion, Vincent Hancock. Um, how big of an advantage do you think that is for you as you approach these games? Um, it's. I think it's quite a big advantage just because we'll be together for a majority of the time we're over there, even though I think we've both established that we won't be able to watch each other's finals, or if we make the final, that is, just because it's going to be so stressful. <laughs> but um, just having someone there with me through the whole experience and guiding me through all the stresses I'm going to have, I think that'll really help me uh, through Tokyo. And then, you know, we talked about it earlier too. You're just, you're going to turn 20 while you're probably in transit or you're over there. Um, do you see that as a plus? I know a lot of um, that youthful exuberance can override any fear that you may have or anxiety. Um, I don't think it's really going to affect all too much. I mean, I will say my birthday is actually on opening ceremony. Oh, nice. That'll be quite Coolest interesting. birthday ever. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? July 23rd. Yeah, mine- Mine's July 9th, so I, I have a birthday right before we go over there. So oh, I got you. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I'm July, too. Got to represent all the July babies here. Federal. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, I, I doubt you could draw up a better birthday day than um, opening ceremonies um, in that atmosphere. I, my goodness, what a day. I think I'll be celebrating quite a lot that night. So, <laughs> Obviously, with the pandemic, it was a delay. So. Kaylee, what have you done to to keep your skills sharp in international trap, you know, with this delay and how has that affected your your mindset? So at first, you know, I think just like everybody else, I was, you know, kind of devastated that the games were postponed. But, you know, understanding the circumstances of everything in the nature, I, you know, understood why they were postponed. So um after having about a day to kind of pout around about that, I I quickly realized that it was very unique opportunity that I had in front of me. Um, you know, most in Austin can attest to this too. You you have the stress leading up to the first half of the Olympic trials and you're kind of stressed through the Olympic trials. And then depending how you do your stress for the six months in between the second half of the Olympic trials and you have the stress of if you make the team and then you're kind of, you know, you have a you don't have a very big window from for training from the time you make the team to the time you go. So removing all of that stress and all of that anxiety of, about it and and kind of feeling like everything was on the go you had a, I had a whole extra year to just kind of relax and enjoy my accomplishment and get a get a game plan for my training and I've had a whole extra year um to train and prepare for the games and I, I feel more prepared than ever and luckily um my training hasn't been too affected by that um, because here where I live I actually have my own private bunker here so um, it's easy for me to just walk walk out the door and and go train for a couple hours and and take a break and get back to training or whatever I need to do so um, it's it's honestly been a a stress reliever and I've been able to just focus more on training leading up to the games. That's great how about schedule wise um, from now until the Olympics what happens? Do you guys have some competitions? I'm, I think we know the answer. I think uh, you know, Austin's bags are packed, I think, for, for Italy. But what, what's the schedule like from now until then? Um, so we're, we're the ski and trap team is heading over to Italy. I think Austin leaves tomorrow. I leave Saturday the 8th um, for my competition. But we're going to be in Italy for a couple weeks. Um, we're shooting the 
World Cup there, and then we're also going to shoot the Green Cup. Besides that, there's some local training matches that we're going to have. Uh, most of the World Cups have been canceled um, or either canceled or we're not going to them because of COVID. Um, so that's really the only competition we have leading up to, to the games. Um, and then we have some training camps before then, but um, really that's about it. And then we head to Tokyo in, in July. And you, Austin, I mean, do you have anything else different, obviously, other than the, the World Cup and the other cup that um, Kaylee mentioned? Um, honestly, I think we're probably going to go the same matches. Um, he mm-hmm. isn't really much different from Trav when it comes to our events. We usually have everything in one area. Yeah, most of our training camps um, are, are partnered with the skeet team. Skeet and trap team pretty much go everywhere together. It's just, you know, like one of us will shoot first and then skeet will, sh- you know, shoot second typically. Um, so we all pretty much travel to the same places, same training camps, same shoots. Um, so we, Austin and I will have pretty similar schedules. Well, that helps to do as a team. You know, uh, I'm sure you'll have time to build that camaraderie between um, the different um, disciplines. Tell us a little bit about what you plan to do as you get to Japan and how you're going to acclimate and get some practice time in at the venue. Um, I don't even know the schedule yet for, for what, uh, when we get over there. Um, I know that they were talking to, uh, uh, last time that I talked to them, they were figuring out, you know, if we were going to have to quarantine or if we were going to be allowed practice. And I, I haven't really heard our exact schedule yet. Um, I'm hoping that once we get over there and we we show that our test is negative, that we will have free range to go, you know, and practice and, and train as normal like we would. Um, that, that's kind of the hope for the trap team, at least. I don't know what the speed team's schedule is, but I would imagine it's, it's something similar. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. We want to get as much training in as possible, too, before the games begin. Yeah. But um, we're mainly, if worst case scenario, we're probably just going to be working on our mental game. For the most yeah, part, for sure. So let's talk about your expectations and and Team USA when you're over there. What do you expect from yourself and um, the performance uh, from Team USA? How do you expect yourselves to do? Well, I mean, I expect to do the best that I can. I've been training for the past two years. I've been trying to perfect my game as much as possible. So the only thing I can really expect is just best me whether that's with a medal, a top 10 position, whatever I can do, hopefully medal position, hopefully gold. But I know that I'm going to go over there and give the best that I can. Yeah, I would, I would have to agree. I would say the same thing. It, it, it's not beneficial for anybody to put, you know, expectations of anything on yourself. Um, I, you know, I'm as trained as I can possibly be. This is the pinnacle of my career. Um, and I, my game plan is just to enjoy it. And like Austin said, do the absolute exactly. best that I can do. Give a hundred percent effort there, and wherever the cards fall, you know, if that ends up with a medal or that doesn't, I'm okay with either one because I know that I've put the time and the effort into the training to get there, and I feel more prepared than ever. So um, the outcome, you know, is would just be at icing on the cake if that ended in a medal. But I'm also just trying to take in the whole experience and enjoy the hard work that it's taken to get to this point. Great perspective. Kaylee, who's the biggest competition over there um, for the trap team? What country? Um, ooh, there's so once we get over there, you know, you're competing against the top of the world. So, uh, you know, the top athletes in the world. So typically our, our main competitors are Italy always has a pretty strong team. China has a pretty strong team. Um, Slovenia has a pretty strong team. I mean, there's there's a handful of girls that, you know, it's just, it, it's going to come down to like what Austin said, it's going to come down to mental, going to come down to the mental game because the skill set, set um, we're all pretty equal there. Um, so it's just going to come down to who's going to battle it out, out the best. How about on the skeet side, Austin, do those countries also have strong skeet teams or are there some other contenders? Oh, for sure. I mean, there are some individuals that I've, can't really think on top of my head right now, which um, come in and out every once in a while. But I will say the two top countries that I can think of at the moment are going to be Italy and China. They have very strong ski teams. You know, what they don't know is the USA has strong trap and too. So I bet Absolutely. We're, <laughs> we're, on a, we're on their radar. They're on ours. So. Absolutely. So you're saying that one 
a one two on the podium for for the U.S. is is doable, right? One hundred. Oh, of yeah. course. Awesome. Well, I think one thing that our listeners don't have a really good grasp on, and you know, unless you're really into the shooting sports, um, the difference between the international sports and your standard American clay target shooting. Kaylee, starting with you, international trap. What what's the main difference? And, and how do you prepare yourself for that versus like, uh, you know, the grand American? Yeah. So the, just quickly, the main difference, um, American trap has one isolating machine inside of a bunker. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the distance that you stand from the machine. Um, but it's probably close to what we stand. Um, and it, it isolates back and forth. It constantly rotates. It can go, um, I think it goes 26 degrees left to 26 degrees right and maybe up to a meter and a half high. Don't quote me on that, but that's like the gist of it. The American or the international version, which is what I can see in, um, is like that on steroids. So we have a 60 foot underground bunker that hosts 15 trap machines. Um, each target that is set has its own machine. So um, like the left hand target, the right hand target and the straightaway each have their own machines that just throw that target. They don't isolate. Um, they can go from anywhere from 45 degrees left to 45 degrees right, anywhere in between and up to three meters high. So a full round consists of 25, just like an American trap. Um, but in international trap, you get two shots instead of one um, because the game is so quick and, and the international games are set to a distance of 76 meters. Um, rather than like a speed, what a lot of people think that they're set to, but the speed on them is about double than American trap. So ours are coming out about 68 to 72 miles an hour, depending on which target it is versus American trap, which I think they average like 38 to 40 miles an hour. I think we'd need more than two shots yeah. over here. <laughs> <laughs> we need an extended tube for me. Yeah, if you make it into the final, they take away that second shot. You just get one shot in the final. <laughs> so, And Austin, what about on, on skeet? Well, there's a few key differences for international skeet. So um, we shoot pairs on nearly every single station besides eight. We have up to a three-second delay, which is so insane wherever you're first starting out. And, um, <laughs> of course, we have our stripes on our vest. That's where we have to keep our gun low until we call and see the target go we also have 25 targets just like american and for our final we have reverse pairs on three four and five so we shoot the high pair on three then the reverse pair on three move to station four shoot the high pair move to station five shoot the normal pair then the reverse pair we go back and forth for about 20 targets and then we drop our first person then every 10 pass after that we go up to 60 we drop one until we have our uh, our winner. Wow! Hey, talk about the delay a little bit. It, it, I mean, talk about mental preparation. I mean, how and do you notice a pattern, or does it depend on who's pulling? How long the delay tends to be? It kind of depends on the range, but all of our delays are random. So we can have a range that has a very long three second delay. We can have a range with a very fast three second delay. We can have a puller who's pulling the target right when it, whenever they hear the puff in our pull, or we can have a puller who's hearing the L part of our pull, and then that's whenever they throw a target. So there's, a, there's quite a bit of variation there, but that's why we train as much as we can on different fields, different targets, uh, different people pulling. Like sometimes I have my dad pull, sometimes I have Vinny pull, or I have one of my friends pull for me. It really helps with that variation. Austin, is the delay come from the computer? Like the computer's running the delay, isn't it? It is. But whenever yeah. somebody presses that button, it can be, you know, they right. can yeah. press the button whatever they want. <laughs> right. But the, the person that's pulling it, um, you know, he's not like waiting three seconds and then after you oh, call no. pulling the well, Yeah. Unless you're on some very archaic field. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and we asked, uh, we asked Derek and Brian this too, but, uh, do you have a signature call, Kaylee? A signature call. Uh, we go, you know, you go to the Grand American. Oh, you go to the Grand American. Boy, you hear some interesting calls. Yeah, you can hear some. Inter I don't think my call is like super loud or like 
out of the ordinary. I, to be honest, I've never even paid attention to it. So I don't even know what I sound like. Just a standard <laughs> pull? But I, I think it's just a normal, like, pull. Yeah. And Austin, do you have a, do you have a call? I'm known as the megaphone on the team, so you can probably hear me from, I want to say, three fields away. <laughs> uh, that's my main poll. It's just I'm the loudest one. That's what everyone keeps on telling me. But like Kaylee was saying, on the field, I really don't notice much of a difference. Um, but, so you're I mean, the, to us, it sounds the same every time. So you're the Serena Williams of tennis? Is that what you're saying? Of shooting? Of shooting, it's of shooting I'm sorry. sorry. But everyone else is telling me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but that's part of the the game, right? Mentally, you you want to do the same thing every time, right? Is that you try to call consistently, so it's not even in your mind; it's just part of what you do. It's so subconscious for us, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I was gonna say, I, to. yeah, I don't even notice. Um, like, I couldn't even tell you what my pool sounds like. It's just so so. It just it's not something that I I think about whenever I'm um about to call pool. It's like it's so subconscious. Beyond competing, what are you looking forward to most about these games? And I'm sure Austin opening ceremony is going to be pretty unique for you with it being your birthday, but anything you're looking forward to? I know I um, am definitely looking forward to opening ceremonies. I mean, that's like the greatest thing, you know, every, every two years, I guess um, it happens, but that's like the coolest thing. There's so, there's so much effort and so much time put into making those opening ceremonies happen. That's, I'm really excited to get to experience that in person. Um, but outside of that, I am also hoping that I can um, sneak away and go watch watch some other events um, <laughs> just to be able to watch them on TV for so long and have the chance to get there and, you know, go go see those people that I've watched on TV for so long, go watch them compete in person. I think it's going to be going to be really cool. All right. Yeah, well, I'm here. definitely with Kaylee on that. I want to see the other. Uh, athletes compete as well and not only that but i want to like you know i'm going to bring my podcast and stuff and like see if i can sneak in an interview with with some some people there and just like pick their brain on how they train and what they're excited for and just i'm excited to meet new people there too well that's fantastic thank you and if you guys don't mind we'll keep you around for another segment we're going to talk to you about ammunition that you'll be using over there and some training techniques that can help all shooters improve their skill sets Meet the industry's widest variety of game-changing ammunition. However you shoot, and whatever you hunt, fortune favors the prepared. And nothing prepares you better than Federal Premium. It's a gold standard advantage delivered directly from the experts in premium ammunition. Find your Federal Premium Advantage today. Welcome back to It's Federal Season and our technology segment, Tech Talk. Kaylee and Austin, thanks so much for staying on with us to talk a little bit more about your gear. So there, there are record 33 sports and 339 events being contested uh, at the games across 42 competition venues. The first medal that will be awarded in the entire games will be won in shooting. On day one of the games, Women's 10 millimeter air rifle will hand out medals. So that's kind of a fun fact uh, that, that Brian looked up here. In total, uh, shooting sports will have 300 competitors, and the disciplines include rifle, shotgun, and pistol. In 2018, and I, I was part of this and really proud to be, so uh, Federal became the official ammunition sponsor and supplier of USA Shooting with our paper shot shells. Um, it's a commitment we made to support and promote USA Shooting and build the team um, the best shot shells that we possibly could uh, in our factory here in Anoka, Minnesota, to help them compete at the highest levels. So, Kaylee, uh, if we could start with you, I know you were one of the original team members with us. Uh, talk about the product that you'll be shooting and, and what the federal partnership has meant for you. So I was um, so excited when... We partnered together um, because Federal has been, even long before um, you partnered with USA Shooting, Federal has been my go-to uh, for everything, for hunting, for training, for shooting. I loved shooting the Federals. And so um, when it became official and it was official sponsor, I, to say I was super pumped is an understatement. Um, but some qualities that, you know, you just don't find in other brands. Um, 
you can cut open like okay i guess let me say what i shoot i shoot the gold medal um federal premium rounds for this one specific to usa shooting uh 24 grams seven and a half and one thing that i am obsessed with is i will cut open um the shells and look at the shot and just see how um consistent the shot is versus you know a competitor and and i always find even on blind look like even on if you just look at them blind you, i don't know what i'm having i always find that i go back to the federals um they're just the most consistent i like how um when i'm shooting them it's 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 more of a balanced recoil rather than like a jump it i don't find anything wrong with them at all um they pattern well they they're consistent when they shoot i rarely ever have a malfunction and if it is it's my own fault because i've left it out in the rain um I just, it's just a super high quality load. And that's, that's what you're after whenever your livelihood is, is on the line. And especially when you're going to go compete at something as prestigious as the Olympics, um, you don't want to have to worry about your ammunition failing. And I can 100% say with confidence that I, I am more confident in my ammo than, than I ever have been. That's awesome. Thanks for that. And I, I know the the factory here and, and our great USA workers um, really were inspired by making ammunition for the Olympic team for USA shooting. And there was a little bit of a learning curve because uh, you talk about cutting open a shell and looking at the shot. Our team actually has to sift the shot because, you know, if, if I don't know how often they test, maybe you could tell us if they check the shell and it doesn't sift properly, uh, meaning it's the wrong size, that could mean the difference for you and that could get us kicked out of the whole game um and they do they they every match before we start every world cup before they start they'll take some samples out of our vests and they go and they check them and they weigh them and they make sure that you know everything's what it's supposed to be that there's no more shot in it than it's supposed to be that it's actually 24 grams um and yeah i mean having that be consistent in every load that federal makes is not only something that is consistent in your training but if something's off there i mean that could get us kicked out of the world cup i mean we we could be um they could kick us out for for illegal shells um and then you've traveled halfway across the world and you know your shells got you kicked out so that's something that i am super confident in um never had an issue in and 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 really thank y'all for taking the time to look into that and to go into that kind of detail because a lot of people don't do that or even know that that, that is a thing that could happen. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a learning curve for it, but the team really, again, was excited and took on that challenge, and we feel really confident that we've got great shells for you. Austin, how about you on, on the ammo you shoot? Uh, Skeet's a little bit different. We're a little bit different. Um, I shoot the same brand as Kaylee, except I shoot the nine shot version of the papers. And I will say right now that out of all the ammo that I've used in the sport, I have never actually had a misfire with any of these shells. They are super smooth, super consistent. And I will also say this just for myself, that these are probably the smoothest shells that I've ever shot for heat, which is it's insane how smooth these are compared to everything else. And it's yeah. super important for us to be smooth and skeet just because we have all this extra movement with our pairs and station eight, which has to be super precise. I mean, these things, they're amazing. Although and not only so that, sweet. but the papers smell so good. I'm just waiting for y'all <laughs> oh, yeah. to come out with a candle. <laughs> it's like, it's heaven when you're up there. <laughs> oh yeah. You definitely know whenever somebody's shooting some uh, federal papers. Yeah, like I'll I'll pop them out of my gun. I'll, I'll sometimes I just go after pieces so I can have two to smell. And you'll see me walk walking from <laughs> five to one, just kind of smelling the shells. They smell so good. <laughs> it's that paraffin wax. We we still have a big old wax vat from year decades ago that we use. It's just a really cool process. So thanks for those comments. Guys. Yeah, the endorsements are great. I'm sure Chanel probably doesn't want to hear that. Maybe we should make, go into a perfume line of. I guarantee if y'all came out with a candle or a perfume or some kind of cologne that smelled like that, every shooter on the market would have it. Yeah, we definitely would. <laughs> I know I would. Let, let's dive into a little bit deeper on what makes you two uh, elite shooters and competitors. And Austin, we'll start with you. Just about a little bit of training regimen that you can um, walk us through to help, you know, that for the high school trap shooters or the local trap shooters that people can take from you. and. Um, 
improve our improve their skills or their their training? Well, okay. First off, I would say if you're just getting started into shooting, it's all about uh, quantity. So every single day, as much as you can, get out on that range, shoot rounds, shoot stations, get very comfortable with what you're doing. But whenever you hit this certain level where you're shooting 24s, 25s, 23s, all these higher scores, that's whenever it becomes about uh, quality rather than quantity. So that's kind of where um, I think me and Kaylee have kind of come to where we're focused more on the quant- or, sorry, quality of our shooting rather than the quantity. So we go out there every day. Maybe we shoot a case, case and a half, something along those lines, and we really focus on perfecting our game rather than shooting as much as we can because we're, we've are we already kind of got everything subconsciously figured out. So at that point, we're just focusing more on um, our mental game. But for anybody starting out, it's all about quantity, or, yeah, quantity and just getting out in that range and shooting as much as you can. Along those lines, I mean, we've talked a lot about mental preparation. What Do you have specific routines that, that you go through and any any tips for folks? as they're approaching challenges in their days? Um, Well, for me, at least, I don't know about you, Kaylee, but I take around 30 minutes before I go out for my first round, second round, third round, whatever it will be, even a final. And I just kind of get into my own head, listen to my music, kind of go through a round in my head. I can have my gun out and I can just be doing practice mounts to imaginary targets and imaginary stations. So before I really go out there, I've already shot the round or the final it's a good way to prepare for what's about to come. What songs get you hyped up? Like electronic stuff, just anything that'll get my heart racing, get me excited to go shoot. Perfect. Brian and I had jock jams back when we competed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'm going to show my age when I say something like I, Eye of the I, Tiger or something like that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that, that's on my playlist too. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, awesome. Then I'm not that old. And, and Kaylee, how about you? What kind of routine do you have as you get ready for a competition from a training perspective and a mental perspective? So from training perspective, um, if I am a couple months out from a competition, like a World Cup or something, um, that's when I kind of hit drills really heavy, like she was saying, quant- or, um, mm-hmm. quantity. Um, and I will, it, it is not uncommon for me to go to, through, you know, two and a half, three cases of ammo a day. Um, that's, I've done that plenty of times just because I want to build that muscle memory and I want to build, I don't want any surprises from a target. And in my game, there's only so many targets that can be thrown. So I like to train all of those targets. So whenever I see that target, my body recognizes that it's muscle memory, then it becomes a more natural move. Um, fast forward to maybe about two weeks or so outside of a, a match is kind of when I start going to quality. Um, like Austin said, I, I I will go more shooting for scores, kind of treating it like a competition, trying to put a little bit of pressure on myself so I can work on my middle game. Um, and that way you're, you're just kind of like a all around trained athlete for that competition. Um, and I, I think it, it's worked out pretty well for me to be to train that way because also you don't want to be hammering out drills um, right before a competition because you want to hit that peak. You know, you want to get to right where you're like, OK, I, I'm kind of shooting really good. If I could really hone in on my middle game, I've got it. And you, you really want to hit that peak right when it's time for your competition. You, you both sound ready. And I, I would imagine that that helps you deal with the pressure when you're on the line because I I, that's a big, it's a big stage. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, the more that you are comfortable with something, the less nervous you are about it, you know? So the more that you do something like every day, um, it, you know, if you're going to go out and start your car, you're not nervous about starting your car because you know exactly what to do and you know exactly how the car is going to perform. You know, exactly. You, you can expect things from that. You know, what's going to happen. So um, the same thing here is you don't want to be surprised by anything because that's when you kind of get the fear and the anxiety comes in because you're like, oh, I'm, I'm familiar with that. I don't really know how to handle that. I'm going to handle it the best way I can, but I probably could have trained for that situation. So the more training that you can get under your belt, just in different scenarios and different situations, um, 
the more it takes those nerves out of the equation, which in reality makes you shoot a lot smoother, a lot natural. Um, there's no tension. If you can shoot tension free, that's always a good good thing. So anything that you can do to prepare yourself to be um, able to shoot more natural is is definitely the way to go. And Austin, how about how do you deal with the pressures? For me, I would say that, like I said before, I try to go through a round before I actually shoot it. And wherever I'm shooting a round, um, if I get nervous during that round for whatever reason, I keep on telling myself that I'm not going to let this target get past me. I'm going to crush this target on every single station I get to. That's that's really what I think every single time I get out there. Because if you get nervous, I mean, that's kind of game over for us. So you just have to try to find a way to convert those nerves into something positive rather than something negative. Yeah, the the biggest advice I would I would say I agree with Austin there 100% because um, taking the nerves out all of that is is just emotion, right? So if we can figure out a way to take the emotion out and give ourselves a task to work on, like she, like her task is reinforcing that she's going to break this target or she might go through, um, you know, she might visualize the move or she might visualize the target and she might actually visualize herself breaking the target. Anything to keep your mind occupied on that, which is what's called a pre-shot routine, um, which is pretty much what every athlete of, of this stature has, um, helps in that way to, to avoid those fear-based thoughts or those anxiety-causing thoughts that kind of creep in when you're when you're in an unknown situation. So if you can give yourself a task um, to work on, whether that be mentally, whether that be physically, whether that be um, staying present, whatever it is, you have to give yourself a, a job to work on. And when you're occupied thinking about that job or that task that you're working on, then that doesn't leave much room for you to, to worry and fret over over things that you can't control. Really great tips. I mean, as we we see, and I, we've, I've been out shooting a couple of times, sporting clays and trap and, and skied at local clubs. There's just an explosion of interest in the sports. And, uh, you know, hopefully those young shooters listen to this podcast and, and also to, I know Kaylee, you've got your own podcast um, beyond the podium. So ho- hopefully they they pay attention and follow you guys on on social media to, to pick up some of those tips and get inspired. I know it uh, inspires all of us here at federal to, uh, to be part of the Olympics and, and have you guys on our team. So really appreciate you joining us. Um, best of luck, uh, in Italy right away here. Yeah. And then also, uh, leading up to the, the big event in the games. Thank you so much, Kaylee and Austin for joining us. What a, what a thrill to have you on and, uh, go USA. Yeah, thank you all so much for having us. It was a pleasure to talk to you all, and hopefully we can do this again soon after e- either Italy or the Games, and we'll we'll come back and catch up with you all how everything went. Perfect. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. There's a time and a place for every season. This is that time, and these are those special places. When preparation gives way to anticipation, rituals, and traditions. Friends, family, forever. This is what you live for. It's time to celebrate the annual tradition like no other. It's federal season. Welcome back to It's Federal Season and the News and Notes segment. Welcome back to It's Federal Season and the News and Notes segment. I'm Brian Calvington, and let's stay on the Olympic theme. Here's some additional fun facts I pulled up. When the shooting sports made their debut in 1896, there were only five events. Fast forward to 2021, there are now 15 events, and they're divided by three different disciplines, rifle, pistol, and shotgun. The sport has gre- has grown steadily alongside the advancements in firearms technology, so really exciting to see the growth there. The shooting competition will take place at an indoor and outdoor range in Osaka, Japan. The venue, the venue which is situated inside Camp Osaka, serves as the headquarters of the Japanese Eastern Army. Women began to compete in shooting at the 1968 Games in Mexico. And in 1984, at the Los Angeles Games, for the first time, separate events were held for women 
and they were contested as part of the games. The USA is the most successful nation in Olympic shooting with a total of 110 medals, 54 gold. That's double the number one by second place China. Kaylee and Austin both alluded to the fact that China will be one of the teams that will push them for gold. And here is the schedule for men's and women's skeet. It starts with qualification rounds on Sunday, July 25th, and the finals are set for Monday, July 26th. The competition will again be held at the Asaka Shooting Range. The schedule for men's and women's trap competition starts with qualifications on Wednesday, July 28th, and the finals are set for July 29th. If you want to support USA Shooting and the hopes and dreams of our shooting teams, you can do so by purchasing gold medal paper shot shells. A portion of each purchase goes to supporting Team USA as they compete for gold. Federal is excited to meet our loyal customers and fans at the Ducks Unlimited Expo being held June 25th through the 27th at Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, Texas. For more on this event, go to www.duckexpo.com. Come out to our family-friendly event to talk with Federal and our sister company, Remington. It will be a great time to celebrate our passions in an outdoor environment. If you like the It's Federal Season podcast, be sure to let us know by filling out a rating and review on iTunes. And remember, for us, it's always in season. It's Federal Season.